Good morning, Shiloh family and friends. This is Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, Indianapolis, the Lord's Church, where God's love and the word transform lives. We are so glad you decided to join us this morning for worship. Welcome to Shiloh. This morning, Shiloh, I want to begin by thanking you, all of those who have been sending in your tithes and bringing your offering and by mail or on Givelify. We thank you for your financial support. And is, as we approach our time of giving, I just want to remind you uh, that uh, our church anniversary is coming up uh, the second Sunday in June, and we're asking for you to continue to bless Shiloh. Uh, with your offerings. And we thank you for all that you're doing, especially during this time that we are away from the sanctuary. God bless you and God keep you. Giving time, Shiloh, is giving time. And we love to give at Shiloh. Looking forward to receiving our offerings today. If you haven't dropped off your offering yet this week, you still have time. You can drop off your offering in our mailbox. You can mail your offering in or you could give online at givelify.com. Good morning again, Shiloh. I just want to come to you uh, with a short prayer as we continue our worship service. Um, Father God, we come right now. We just want to say thank you for your love, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for all that you've done in this, the last and evil days. Thank you for keeping us and keeping our families safe and keeping us covered during this crisis. Uh, we know that you're doing something in this age and we may not understand what you're doing, but we accept your sovereignty and your right to, to handle the world just the way you want to handle it. We love you. We honor you. We give you all the praise. Now, Father, as we come, uh, bless our congregation who are in their homes right now, Father. Bless all of those who are listening to this message today, Father. You know what each and every one of them stands in the need of. I pray that today's message will bless them and encourage them to hear you and obey you. For you're just calling for us to be your obedient servants. We thank you, Father. We know you're able. We're just asking that you will. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, amen. Good morning, Shiloh. Once again, I come to you uh, 
Our morning message this morning will be coming from the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah chapter 40, beginning at verse number 27. Isaiah chapter 40, beginning at verse number 27, and we'll read to 31. Amen. Very familiar passage from the book of Isaiah. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Amen. God's word for God's people. This morning, just for a few moments, I want to share a word with you from our Father. Sometimes you just need to wait. Sometimes you just need to wait. As we examine this text, uh, you hear in the text a cry out of uh, the author Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, is reciting what some people are saying, and maybe some people are saying even today, maybe unbelievers or under-discipled or immature Christians, some are asking the question, uh, doesn't God realize what we're going through? Doesn't God realize the pain and the, the anguish that we're going through right now during this season of COVID-19? Doesn't he see our pain? Uh, doesn't he see the trouble that we're in? Why won't he rescue us right now? Why won't he just deliver us right now? Why won't he just wash away COVID-19 so we don't have to deal with this situation? Doesn't he see this is unfair? Doesn't he know uh, my family is struggling? Doesn't he know we were just getting uh, to a good place and that I deserve better than this? It just isn't fair. Some people may be crying out right now, not understanding what God is doing, but you got to know that God is in control. Even in the midst of a crisis, you've got to trust God and know that God is in control. That at the right time, at the right moment, God will do what God always does. You got to understand that this crisis, as extreme and devastating as it is, and my heart goes out to everybody who is suffering, uh, there are over 90,000 people who have died in this season already, and there are more dying every day. The death toll is rising every single day, not just in America, but all over the world. And our hearts, they just go out to the people who are suffering right now. It's both a health crisis and it's now become an economic crisis. Millions of people in America have lost their jobs. Millions of people are out of work. They were forced to stay home. And even though the states are starting to reopen, there are millions of people who will never be able to go back to work. Millions of jobs will be lost forever. The suffering may last for a long time. But in the midst of this devastating crisis, in the midst of this devastating catastrophe, and certainly this is the greatest catastrophe of our lifetime, we've never seen anything this devastating. But in spite of the fact this is the most devastating crisis of our lifetime, you need to understand this certainly is not the most devastating catastrophe of God's lifetime. God's been here from the beginning. Uh, he is the great creator. Uh, he was here in the beginning, and, and he has seen death of all kinds through the centuries. 
and he's seen death. Uh, I, I understand that, that many things probably have broken God's heart in terms of seeing men die over the years, uh, seeing men die at the hands of disease, seeing men die at the hands of war and conflict, seeing men die. But I can imagine even very in the beginning, in the garden, when there were just two souls on the face of the earth, uh, those two souls died in the very presence of God. At that time, everyone died in the garden. Uh, you remember God had told Adam and Eve not to eat from the fruit of this tree. It was the tree that uh, gave the knowledge of good and evil. And he told them, if you eat from that tree, tree you shall surely die. And death occurred in the garden when they disobeyed God. Uh, there were only two, and they both died. We know they didn't die fear physically, but worse than dying physically, they died spiritually. They were separated from God, and the pain, God's own creation, God placed this creation here on the earth to share and worship with him and to be with him and to walk, and he had to separate himself. From his creation. It's the first death that happened, and in that first case, they all die. Spiritual death. But that wasn't the only time that a great catastrophe happened and many died. Uh, you remember in the time of Noah, in the time of Noah, God uh, had decided that he grieved that he'd even made man. Man had become so wicked that God grieved that he made man. He told Noah to build the ark and to get ready. And Noah, his family, and just two of every animal would be saved on the earth. At this time, there would be physical death of all mankind except for Noah and his family. All died but a few. God grieved the death of mankind. But he started over with Noah and his family and they repopulated the earth and they started over and, and God gave mankind a second chance. Uh, uh, and we know that God loved man and he's always loved man and tried to do the best he could for us. And But man always seems to want to go his own way. And there came a time, and you know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Man became wicked and evil as Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham, God's friend. Abraham had a nephew named Lot, and Lot had made uh, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, the region of Sodom and Gomorrah. He had made it his home, and he had gone down to live in the city, uh, uh, and the angel came to destroy the city, but Abraham argued for the city. He said, if I could just find five righteous men, God, would you not save and spare the city? Well, you know the story. I hope you know the story, but you can look it up. I didn't, I didn't come to tell you about Abraham and Lot and Noah. I just want you to understand that God has always had to do what God has had to do to cleanse the earth from unrighteousness. And sometimes the rest of us get in the way. Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, uh, Abraham argued, and the angel let Lot and his family leave. Uh, but all of Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire. I know it hurt God's heart to see this death and destruction. And down through the years, there's been death and destruction that God has had to see at the hands of man, but also at his own hand, he's had to grieve the loss of life. And here in our age, and we're crying out to God, and, and we are crying out to God because we want to see an end to this pandemic. We want to see an end to this crisis. We want to get back to life that we know, that we see, that we believe is life as normal. But the Lord just asked me to tell you, sometimes you need to wait. And right now, we're waiting on the Lord. 
See, in the scripture, it reminds us that we serve a sovereign God who hears our cries and sees our trouble and knows all about what we're going through, but wants us to understand that all things work for the good, that even this crisis that we're going through is working for our good, and sometimes we just need to wait to see how it's going to turn out in the end. We just need the wait because the Lord is the everlasting God. The Lord is the creator of all the earth. The Lord is the one who's been here from the beginning. The Lord is our rock and our salvation. He never grows weak or weary. He never tires out. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He is always knowing what is best. He's an all-knowing God. He is our Savior. He is the one who gives power to the weak. He gives strength to the powerless. And right now, while we're feeling weak, this is the time that God is giving us power and strength. Uh, the scripture goes on to say that he that waits upon the Lord shall renew his strength, that even the youth and the young men will become weak and weary. The young men and the youth may be running around doing whatever they want to do right now, but eventually they'll become exhausted and they will fall and become weak. But ye who believe in God, who hear God, who know how to wait on God, God will renew your strength. You will mount up with wings as eagles. You will run and not walk. You will walk and not faint. You will run and not grow weary. You will walk and not become faint. God is preparing us for a time to come. And now is a time for us to wait on the Lord. What what does it really mean to wait? Some of us just think about waiting as being patient, but in the context of this scripture, in the context of what the Lord is speaking to us today, God is saying not only to be patient, he's saying to trust him. We could say it this way. For those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Those who trust in the Lord will soar high on wings like eagle. Those who trust in the Lord will run and not grow weary. Those who trust in the Lord will walk and not faint to trust in the Lord. When you trust in the Lord, you believe in him. You believe in his word. You know his word, and you know that his word will deliver you through whatever the, the tragedy that you're going through, whatever the valley you're going through, whatever the circumstance you're going through, whatever the situation you're going through, whatever the pain, the grief, whatever you're going through, you trust that Lord will lead you through it if you follow him. Trust means you have to be patient. Trust means you have to listen. Trust means you have to follow him. You have to listen. You have to hear his voice. In order to follow him, you have to hear the voice of the Lord. And sometimes you just have to wait. Be still. Listen for the whisper so that you can know which way to go. Don't get in a hurry to go someplace, to get someplace, to be someplace, because God is with you right now. You don't have to run back to the church to see God. You can see God right where you are. And maybe right now you're not feeling God, but I need you to go to your secret place. Go to your closet, go to your knees, go to your, your kitchen table, go to your bedroom side, go to that place where you can be alone and just talk to God. Get your Bible, open up your Bible, start reading your Bible and just start praying and just start talking to God so that you can hear him. 
Because you have to trust in what he's telling you right now. Trust him in his direction. Follow him where he leads you. Believe in his word. But you have to be listening for his voice. You have to see the signs of the times that he is delivering in your very presence. You have to know that you are his and he loves you. And because he loves you, he will lead you through this valley. Because you trust him, you know that you can share his love. Because you trust him, you live without fear. You know that you can share his word and his love with other people. You know that you can still go out, evangelize, and disciple. You can call people on the phone. You can meet people at the grocery store. You can talk to people and let them know that in this age, no matter what's going on, God still loves us. Tell them about a God that has loved you all your life because this is not your first catastrophe either. You see, there was a time in your life when, when you were at your lowest point before you got saved. It may have been a long time ago, but if you think back, you know that you were a wretch undone. I know I was a wretch undone, but God saved my soul. God delivered me. From all my iniquity, God reached down low and picked me up. When I wasn't worth being picked up, he loved me. And that's the God I serve, who loved me in spite of myself, in spite of my inadequacies, in spite of my iniquity, in spite of all the things that I did in disobedience to him. He still loved me and forgave me. Jesus revealed his love to me, his sacrifice on the cross. And maybe I said that earlier that those times where, where in the garden two people died and then at Noah's time all the people died. Uh, uh, but maybe those things grieved God. But I imagine now that I think about it, that there was a time when just one person died that it must have hurt and broke God's heart the most. The one who he sent to die on the cross, his only begotten son, whom he sent. One man died that all of us could live an eternal life with God. How that must have broken his heart on that day. Jesus died on Calvary. He died so that we could live. But what great joy the father must have had to raise up his son early Sunday morning on the first day of the week. He died, but three days later, God raised him up. It was a sad day when he died, but it was a great day because the penalty for our sins had finally been paid and now God could forgive us and restore a life with his human creation. He made a way for us. And that was a great day. And he's still making a way for us today. God loves us. In spite of all that you see going on around you, know that God loves you and still wants the best for you. You just need to follow him and be his obedient servant. God loves you, and so do we. Remember, love God, love people, make disciples. Amen. God bless you. Let me extend an invitation to you. I invite you to our sanctuary when we reopen. I, but I, right now, I want to invite you to Christ. You need a Savior. You need a Lord who knows how to save. You need him right now. You need Jesus. And I extend that invitation that you would accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And we're here. You can contact us at 
our phone number, our, our email address. You can contact us and we will call you back if you need counseling, if you need a greater understanding. Uh, you can come to our Bible study online. Uh, but join us. Be discipled. God loves you. We do too. Shiloh, I hope that message uh, blessed you today. I hope you had a, a good worship service today, and I hope the rest of your Sunday is equally as inspiring. Go and tell somebody about a God who saves, one who loves you, one who will encourage you, one who will lift you up, one who will not let you fall down, the one who will strengthen you when you follow him. We love you, Shiloh. God bless you. Now, as we come to depart this place, but never to depart from your presence, Father, may the love of Jesus Christ, the grace of God, the communion of the sweet Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide. And all of God's children said, Amen. Shiloh, I want you to stay tuned for our morning announcements. I just want to remind you, Shiloh, uh, I am so excited about the opportunity for us to come back, and I'm looking forward to coming back soon. Uh, things are getting better. Uh, we are not completely over this COVID-19 crisis, but we will be back in our sanctuary soon, and we're looking forward to everybody being able to come and do in-person worship. We don't have a date yet. Uh, but we will be back soon. And we are preparing. I just wanted to know, let you know that we are preparing uh, to come back. We are doing those things that are necessary to make sure that when we come back, everything will be uh, of the utmost safety-wise and health-wise. We're concerned about our members, and we want to be sure that when we come back, that we've taken care of everything that is necessary to take care of. So looking forward to coming back. Um, I want to remind you that uh, coming up, uh, we probably will not be, well, not probably, we will not be celebrating our church anniversary the way we usually do by inviting guests and coming, but we are going to still celebrate in giving. So we still need your church anniversary offering. Uh, this year we're celebrating 133 years. And even though we're not going to have any special guests or any special services, we definitely need your offering. Uh, this year. The church anniversary committee asked everybody for $133. Give what you can in these times. We know that there is a struggle and, and some of you have lost your jobs and we're praying with you that God will keep you. Trust him. He will lead, guide, and direct you. Connect with Shiloh. Our mailing address, 3801 Forest Manor Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46226. Our phone number, 317-545-8253. Our email address, info at shilohindy.org. You can connect with us on Facebook at Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church Indy or on our new YouTube channel. Join us at Shiloh Indy on YouTube. You can also connect with us on our apps. We have a prayer app. It's pray.com. Search for Shiloh Indy. We also have a band app where we join together as a community at band.us. And then join us also uh, if you want to give electronically, you can go to givelify.com. Download that app and you can give through the app. Join us every Wednesday for a Wednesday worship. Wednesday worship, 7 a.m. prayer, 6 p.m. Bible study on our conference call number, 978-990-5000. The access number is 358-289-POUND. You can also replay morning worship at uh, audio only at 978-990-5099. The same access code, 358-289-POUND, and hit pound for the most recent worship service.